Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guide video on vital calculator skills for GCSE Maths Statistics. We're going to be looking at a series of GCSE Mathematics questions in this video, all of which we can use the Statistics app on the calculator to help us with. That doesn't necessarily mean they're statistics questions, but the Statistics app will be able to help. Now I'm doing this on an FX83 GTCW model of calculator. You may have that model or very similar. As long as you've got the Statistics app, you should be able to follow along with this video. Although if you have an older model, you may need to do a slightly different method in order to achieve the same results. Also, the methods that I'm showing you here are certainly not the only methods that you can use to answer the question and may not be the best method for you to be able to answer the question. You are, of course, free to use your own method if you have a better one. It also comes with a warning that the answers that are derived from the calculator may not get you all or any of the marks that are available in the question, especially if they ask you to show your working. So it's very important that you show your working if the question requires you to do so. But with that being said, let's take a look at the first question. Write the following numbers in order of size. Start with the smallest. We've got a list of numbers here, 5 ninths, 0 0.61, 63%, 11 over 20, and 0 0.589. So a mix of fractions, decimals, and percentages. What we're going to do is let the calculator sort that into order for us, starting with the smallest and so on. From home or menu, we select statistics, and then we've only got one variable to input, so we'll just select one variable. Now we're going to input the five values here. If you have a frequency column switched on at this stage, just ignore it. It's just going to pre-populate with a one, or just ignore it. But if you don't have a frequency column, don't worry about that, we'll switch that on shortly if you don't have that. So let's concentrate on inputting the values as they're written. So we'll start off with five ninths, 0 0.61. We'll input this as it's written, 63. If we want a percentage on this model of calculator, it's catalog, probability, and then select percentage. You may have a dedicated percentage button that you can put it in, 63%. And of course, that's 0 0.63 as a decimal. You could input it as that, but we will need to bear that in mind for when we write our final answers. Then we've got 11 over 20, another fraction. And then finally, 0 0.589. Once we're done, what we need to do is to press Tools. And then we want to select Sort. And then we want the first option here, X ascending. So starting with the smallest, going to the largest. And the calculator will have sorted these out for us. So let's take a look. First off, the smallest value is 11 twentieths. Scrolling down, we've got 5 ninths. So the two fractions were the smallest. Then 0 0.589, 0 0.61. And then finally here, well, we've got it as a decimal, 0 0.63. So we just need to recognize that 63% which is the largest. Let's try that again, this time with decimals only. If we want to clear that out, it's tools, edit and delete all. We've got rid of all the data there. Let's input these decimals as they're written, 3.5678, 3.5768, 3.567 and 3.56788. Just being careful there, they're all very similar. Once we've got to the end, it's tools, sort, and this time we want X descending to start with the largest. And let's have a look. We've got 3.5768, 3.56788, 3.5678, and then lastly, 3.567, which should be the smallest. So the calculator sorted that in order for us. Maybe you're fine with that, but I know some people aren't quite so sure, so it's a very useful tool to be able to sort out values in ascending or descending order. Let's take a look at the next question. Here are the prices in pounds of five different pieces of machinery. And we've got the prices there, work out the mean price. So this is working out a simple mean with five different values. Let's press tools and edit and delete all to clear everything out. And what we're going to do is just to input the values as they're written, starting with 2,450 and going down to 3,780. Once we've inputted all five and we're prompted for a six, well, we don't have a six, so we're just going to press execute at this point. 
and then we want one var results, one variable results. And what we're looking for here is the very top value there, x bar, x with the line across the top, that is the mean. So the mean is 3,108 pounds. Also, you may notice that the second value there, the sum of x, is the result if you added all those values together. And of course, if you divide that by how many there are, five values, you get your mean 3,108. So if you wanted to put a bit of working, you could write that figure down divided by five. Another mean again, this time from a frequency table. Work out an estimate of the mean time the 90 students spent revising GCSE maths. And you may use this table to help you. You can see there's a prompt there that we need to find the midpoint. That's because we've got classes or groups of times there for the students for the times that they spent revising and we've got frequency there. Let's just back out of this page. So return, tools, edit, delete all, okay. If we don't already have a frequency column on this model of calculator, we want to go to tools and then to frequency and then I've already got it switched on here. So if you don't have it switched on, you just need to select on by pressing OK. For other models, this may be in the settings under calc settings or something similar. You need to look for statistics and frequency to be able to turn the frequency column on. So now that we've got the frequency column, what we want to do is in the X, we're inputting the midpoint for these types of tables. Obviously, if you've got a definite value for X, you can just input that. But for groups, we want to input the midpoint. If you're not sure what the midpoint is, you can work it out within your entry point here. If you have a set of brackets, let's say we don't know the midpoint here, we'll add the two values together, the upper and lower bound of the group, 5 plus 10 and close the brackets, divided by 2 because we want the midpoint. And then we've got the midpoint, 7.5. So if you're not sure, you can add the two values together and divide by 2. Let's fill in the rest, 12.5. Careful here because the group width has changed. So we've got a midpoint of 20. And then the last group there, a midpoint of 35. Once we've inputted the midpoints, we need to then input the frequencies. So navigate up to the top of the frequency column. And then we want uh, 3, 12, 27, 33, and 15. Once we're done, it's execute one more time and then one var results. You can see we have the estimate of the mean here, 18. Remember, it is an estimate as we have used the midpoints of the groups there. We don't know the exact values for X. Let's clear this out. Return, tools, edit and delete all. Let's take a look at this question. So with these types of questions, you have to be very careful, but this one seems to lend itself to be able to use statistics mode to answer it. So we've got some information about the members of a swimming club, number of members, we've got adult and junior members, and we've also got the mean age of the members already. Work out the mean age of all 65 members of the club. Give your answer as a decimal. Okay, so what we want to do here, let's input the means as the X value. So uh, 28 for the adults and 14 for the juniors. And then the frequency, we're going to put number of members. So there's 40 with a mean of 28 and 25 with a mean of 14. Once we're done, press execute and it's one of our results again. And there we have the mean of all 65 members, 22.62, let's say, to two decimal places. You might also take note of the sum of X there which is 1,470. That's the total age of all the members added together, which could be useful. Okay, return, tools, edit, and delete. So let's take a look at this question now. A straight line passes through 422 and 947. Work out the equation of the line. Give your answer in y equals mx plus c form. We can use statistics to be able to work out the equation of the line, given that we have two coordinates. So we're going to input the two coordinates. Now we need to change the statistics slightly because we've got two variables. So if you return or perhaps go to home or menu again and come back in, we want to change from one variable to two variables. We've got two variables this time, X and a Y. Now be careful if you're using an older model, you may be prompted for the relationship between 
uh, y and x at this point. Now I will discuss that a little bit later, so just keep watching. For those of you using the more up-to-date model, then you select that relationship a little bit later, and it's gonna be the first option, which will be the straight line. So again, with this one, just ignore frequency. It's just gonna pre-populate, but we want to input the x and y coordinates. So we've got x coordinates of four and nine, and we've got y coordinates of 22 and 47 respectively. Once we've inputted those, we want to press execute. And this time we want to select reg results or regression results, press OK. And then at this point on this calculator, we'll choose the type of relationship. Again, earlier models, you may have to choose this relationship before you input X and Y. And we're going to choose the, the top line, which represents the straight line. Y equals A plus BX. So press execute here or OK. And here we have, well, we're given the values here, A, 2, B, 5, and R equals 1. R means it's a perfect straight line, perfect linear relationship. So, well, we'd expect that anyway. We know it's a straight line. The number that comes in front of the X is B in this case, which is 5 and a is the constant 2. So it's y equals 2 plus 5x. If we want that in y equals mx plus c form, we just need to swap around the 5x and the 2. So we'd write it as y equals 5x plus 2, and that's our final answer. We can just delete these two entries out, use the backspace. We can use a similar process to find the nth term of a linear sequence. Here we have the sequence 7, 16, 25, and 34. What we're going to do here is in the X column, we're going to input the N value of the terms. So 1, 2, 3, 4, first term, second term, third term, fourth term. Navigate up to Y, and in the Y, we're going to input the values in the sequence. So 7, 16, 25, and 34. Press execute when done, and once again, we want reg results and we want the same straight line equation there. We've got an A of negative two, a B of nine, and once again, an R of one. That's just a perfect linear relationship, which we'd expect. How would we write this? Well, again, we want to swap them around. We don't want Y equals negative two plus nine X. What we want is Y equals nine N. Remember X is representing N. Y equals nine N minus two, subtract two, and that's our nth term. Let's exit, edit, delete all, and we're clear to go for the next one. Now we're going to do the same this time for the nth term of a quadratic sequence, but we're going to select a different type of relationship after we've inputted our data. Remember with older models, you need to do this before. Let's input one, two, three, four, for first term, second term, third term, and fourth term of the sequence. Seven, 25, 53, and 91 in the Y column. Press execute when done, and it's down to red results. And this time we want the second option here, which represents a quadratic. Let's have a look at what we've got. We've got A of negative one, B of three, and C of five. Remember in a statistical sense, they give you them in the reverse order. So they start with a constant, then the number of X's, then the number of X squareds. So we want to swap these around, and also we want to substitute X for an N. So we write this as the nth term being 5n squared plus 3n subtract 1. And we've got the nth term of the sequence there. The last question that we've got here, so return and edit and delete again. And we're ready to go for the last question that we have here. Hx equals a times b to the power of x, where a and b are constants. We know h1, so that's where x equals 1, equals 12 and h4 equals 96. We've got to work out the value of h2. So that's when x equals 2. What we're going to do is use the calculator to find the value of a and b. Then once we know those, we're going to use the equation with an x value of 2 to find out what that equals. So once again, we're going to input the x values first, x of 1 and x of 4. That's what we have in the brackets. And that equals 12 for the 1 and 96 for the 4. Press execute and down to reg results. Now we want to have an exponential relationship here. So let's scroll down to see which one fits. And here we can see y equals a dot b to the power of x. The dot just represents a multiply. So a times b to the power of x, select that one, execute. And we can see here the values of a and b. We've got a perfect exponential relationship there, r equals one. 
So A is six and B is two. What we're going to do then is to just go to home and switch to calculate to do the final calculation. Six times two to the power of, well, X is two and execute. There we've got that final answer there, 24, which is the value of H2. There we go, how we can use the statistics app to help us with various different types of GCSE maths questions, not just statistics. Let me know in the comments which ones your favorites are. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guide.